Hello to all of you who are participating in the online book study of Different Dream Parenting, a Practical Guide to Raising a Child with Special Needs. My name is Jolene Philo and I'm the author of the book and the facilitator and I would like to welcome you back to week four of our study. I can hardly believe we're halfway through the book and the study. It's been so much fun to get to know you and hear your stories that the time is going very, very quickly. But as I said, this week marks the beginning of week four and we are moving on to section four of the book which deals with caring for children with long-term chronic conditions. Now those conditions might be medical in nature, they might have mental health implications, they may be developmental delay situations, what, but whatever your child's um, diagnosis may be, if it is a long-term condition that's going to require long-term care from you and possibly others, that's what we're talking about this week. Uh, the theme of the week is from trepidation to triumph. And I'm sure if you're at all like me or the other parents that are participating in this study, when you first heard about your child's special needs, you wondered how in the world you would be able to care for your child's needs. And you began the journey with a lot of trepidation. And there are still days, I know, when we all wake up and feel that way. But we also can learn as we, as we uh, gain skills, as we talk to other people in the special needs community, and as we cling to the promises that God gives us as far as providing for us and, and lighting our path before us, that we can come to a sense of triumph and victory as we're parenting our kids. So what will we be talking about this week? starting tomorrow morning when the first two questions will be posted. Well, first of all, your reading assignment is chapters 13 to 16, just four chapters, and they begin, chapter 13 begins on page 145, the section ends on page 183. Now remember, you don't have to read all four chapters for tomorrow. Tomorrow on Monday, we will just be discussing chapter 13. And chapter 13 talks a lot about managing finances, looking for sources of funding to help support your child, especially if they have some uh, big needs and caregiving needs. Maybe they need in-home care, residential care, respite care. We'll be talking about how to tap into some of those, those sources, both private and governmental. And we will also talk about how to determine the level of care your child needs with, with whatever his or her diagnosis may be. And I would love to have you chime in on that discussion because I only have my experience, personal experience to speak from, even though the book contains stories of many, many other families. Even so, your experience in your situation will be very valuable to someone else who's participating in the study. Now, when we move on to Tuesday, we'll be talking about schooling, uh, and we'll be talking a lot about early intervention services, how to access those, what's involved in uh, your child getting an IEP or a 504 plan through the school and through early intervention services, and how you can participate in that process. That will be Tuesday when we're talking about Chapter 14. Wednesday, in Chapter 15, we're going to be talking about ways to keep your child active in the community, even though your child may have some significant special needs. There are still things that you can do to have you and your child and your family be active members of our community, and I'm going to love to hear what you have to say about how you manage that with your family. Then on Thursday and Friday, as always, we'll take two days for the last chapter in this section, and we will be discussing a couple issues related to faith. On Thursday, we're going to talk a lot about guilt, our sense of guilt as parents of kids with special needs, maybe self-blame things that we're going through, and we'll, we'll really delve into how we can determine whether the guilt we're feeling is founded based on something we need to change in our lives or unfounded based on the whispers of the enemy who wants to discourage us. Then on Friday, we're going to go on and talk a little bit more about how to distinguish between grief and guilt. We often mistake our feelings of grief with guilt. And when we're parenting kids with special needs who are still living, we often can carry a lot of guilt 
because we don't think we should feel grief and yet we are allowed to feel that. And so we're going to be uh, sharing how we deal with those grief issues, how we learn to recognize them, and why it's okay to grieve for our living children with special needs. So once again, I really look forward to you stopping in every day when the new questions are posted. I look forward to hearing your stories, learning about resources you found that have helped you deal with long-term health conditions, and answering your questions or throwing those questions out for the larger group to answer based on their experiences. So get your book out, start reading, and join me tomorrow right back here when we start discussing long-term health conditions. See you then.